Hey guys, Vice from Cloud9 here, and I'm gonna teach you how to play Cypher on Split. Revolve there. Three, 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 three. Yeah, they do more they hard. Oh, nice. So I like Cypher on Split because generally on the B bomb site, it's really hard to hold. And uh, by playing Cypher on B, you can give a lot of space and a lot of freedom to your team to play around mid. It's generally good with comps that are kind of weak on defense, so Cypher can kind of uh, bolster your defense if you want to play like a raise and sage and be heaven and uh, the rest of the comp can be pretty flexible around the cypher pick and I think the advantages of playing cypher is that he's really good on defense but alternatively uh, on offense he doesn't provide too much except for maybe his cages and obviously his camera is really good but I think that's a good trade-off because uh, split is a really defense heavy map and you need to make sure that you have a good defense half to kind of finish the Make sure you secure the win on split. So on defense, I think the the obvious place to play Cypher would be at the B bomb site. But overall, I think Cypher is really good if you kind of move him around. So sometimes, you know, most of the rounds you might be playing B, but sometimes you can play A and switch it up and kind of catch the opponents off guard. Even placing some utility in mid would be really good. Uh, because if the opponent always knows where you're playing, then they can easily predict where your camera might be or your trip wires or your cages and stuff. So it's really good to just try to switch it up. But um, I'd say in ranked, uh, playing B is pretty pretty solid. You could play B for most of the rounds, but I would highly recommend sometimes switching it up and playing A or you can leave some utility at A and also play B or just leaving your utility at A and also just playing A off your, your own utility. So to start with B, um, good places to place traps. Obviously, I mean, like the standard ones here are pretty good, but I think over time people, they start to understand that there would be a trap uh, at the entrance here or maybe even on the trash can, which are both generally good trips, but as people started to adapt, they would, you know, Rays would come here and break the trap with the Roomba bot or the satchel. So I started to place my traps maybe around here is a very common strategy as well with the jet would come and dash and the dash would end up about here behind the pillar and she would still have to deal with this trip which would be annoying for her so this this is a really good trip or maybe even um putting one here late like let's say the rays would come and throw all of her utility you could throw one late and if they wanted to come back after you know they wanted to take mid control and they wanted to come back be main there would still be a trap here at B they would have to deal with. Um, another good one is maybe like this, just around the default plant. It limits their ability to wrap around the pillar, which is really common if they take B site. You could even do one like this, which is a lot more uncommon because sages would just wall off this line here. So I wouldn't really recommend this one, but the other ones are pretty good. Generally, I would do this cage, come into this door right here. I would aim at this uh, wooden kind of bar, and I would just throw the cage like this. It'll land on the roof, which is what you want. And basically, if they, if you think that they're coming to your site, you can pop the cage, and you can see their feet, and it's very hard for them to see you. It's basically a one-way cage that can get you some kills uh, if you time it right. Another cage you can do is maybe here and uh, it's really good against like the jet strat because the jet will dash maybe around this area behind the cage and if you wanted to play behind the pillar or back site it's really good because you pop cage the cage three. here. Uh, it's very common as I said before the sage wall is here and the cage will pop here meaning that they're trapped in this area. They don't have a lot of movement after they've expended all their utility to come into B and your teammates from mid can come and basically support you and your job basically here is to delay them from planting the bomb and you have all of this control still with this cage. You'll have the backside control here and you'll have a lot of the pillar control as well. So those are some good cages and also another good cage that I start to do as well basically to counter the jet players that want to dash in. Uh, just to give a different look, it's very similar to this cage, cage here. I would throw a cage kind of here as well. Cage triggered. This basically forces them to play only in these areas. They, they cannot push you and spawn, allowing your teammates to come out and freely rotate 
uh, as well as from heaven, they can... There's a wall here, and the cage will block them from backside here, so they're, they're able to freely come into sight, and you can retake together. And if you pair it with... This camera is pretty good sometimes, but people have been breaking this camera. It's good if you do it once in a while and they don't expect it, but if you do it every time, they'll most likely just break it. They'll just pre-fire the camera. Sometimes another good camera would be off the barrier. Let's say the round starts. I have my camera out. I'll walk up a little bit and I'll do a camera somewhere in this general area. And what this will do is the person coming in B main, they will feel scared to basically pressure you because they'll hear the camera, but they won't know where it is. And basically what you want to do with this camera is you don't want to stay on it because you want to keep the camera alive for as long as you can. But if you need info periodically, you can tap the camera and see if anyone's in B-Main. And that's good info for your team and also yourself because if you see no one here and it's kind of mid-round, you can kind of cheat away. If you've put your trap there and they haven't broken it, it's also really good. You have a lot of security. They can't really come into B without you knowing. Another good camera that I would use sometimes is I would come up the rope on the start of the round and I would place the camera like this. This is good also because if your teammates need to, if they get pushed off of mid and we lose control of B Heaven, um, you can see also the B main walk in and if they split you from B Heaven. So as I said before, Cypher is uh, really powerful if you keep your enemies guessing about where your trips and your camera is. So sometimes if you want to switch it up and you don't want to use all of your utility at B, you can come mid and maybe help your teammates by tripping B heaven like this. This allows them to fall back if they need to and play off of your tripwire here like this. They can run into it and maybe your teammates can get a free kill like this and fall back. Uh, another really powerful trip would be tripping inside of the rope room here. What this will do is basically if there's a lot of pressure mid and your A players are afraid that they can go ropes, uh, the enemies have to break this trip or get past it somehow before they can uh, basically sandwich your teammates at A. So this gives them a lot of space and a lot of security towards A. They can just focus on um, holding down this area of the map here, maybe A main or A ramp here, and they don't have to worry so much about anyone coming from mid up the ropes. In mid as well, if you feel that you don't need your camera for yourself, you can do a camera like this behind the mid box. This is something that I've picked up recently that I think is really good. Um, mid is a highly contested area, so maybe your camera could be uh, really helpful for your team here. Basically, it's very hard for them to see until they get up to a, a point where you basically know that they want to come up mid here. So if they want to make presence here and you're on your camera and they don't want to come up and break it, you basically know that they don't want to split. They want to go five, either A or B, and there'll probably not be anyone mid if they don't break the camera. But if they do break your camera, they're already up at a point where you can tell that they want to split somewhere. And this will basically give your teammates a, a better picture of how to defend the map because they'll have a deeper understanding of what the enemy team wants to do against you. And if you want to play A, some of the trips that I like to do, it's nothing special, but it's still really powerful. Um, I think the aspect of uh, catching the enemy off guard, not expecting you here is, is really good, is probably the most powerful aspect of playing A. You can just do a trip like this, right? Maybe with the cage as well or even a trip like up here and a trip in a cage like this. And what this will do is maybe if they if the enemy team has seen you at B many times, they'll come A and they won't they'll expect like their normal A players to be here. So they'll if they want to come out lower, they'll have to deal with this trip which is a very defensive trip. So by the time they've come to this trip, they're kind of already committed to A. And they'll either break the trip and if they break the trip, you can pop the cage, delaying their push, or maybe even holding your cage, getting some free kills as they run through. Or obviously, if they run through the trip, you can pop the cage as well and also just get a free kill through the cage. Um, the purpose of this A Heaven trip and cage is pretty much the same, but it also gives you peace of mind so that maybe two, your A player that's playing with you can hold lower with you. And if they want to come A, you can pop this cage. 
and your teammates in mid can just come up the rope freely and they don't have to worry about these angles over here. Um, to pair with these trips and cages, I like to do this camera, which is really good because normally what you'll see is you'll do you'll see like a cipher, maybe the enemy cipher will come here and try to gauge like this. And they'll try to maybe be cheeky and cross across the ramps. And sometimes you might be able to see over their own cage and you can get the information that they want to come here. Maybe you'll see like two or three and you can relay that information to your team and you'll know that they're that they want to hit it. So that's a great camera. I would do this camera sometimes as well. Um, you can obviously see if they come up the ramp, which is good information, but if they want to like walk out A or something and you have a trip in mid to help your team. You can see the cross if they want to walk out lower this way, which is really good. And it's very hard for them to break this camera because they can only break this camera if they're peeking like this, which is very unlikely because if they peek like this, they're open to many angles lower. Or they have to come basically on the ramp here, which is also another kind of dangerous spot for them because you could be playing anywhere on the ramp here. So the way I like to play Cypher on offense is I'll usually come towards A most of the rounds on um, attack side default. I'll come to this corner of this square here and I'll line up my crosshair with this uh, kind of black line, throw a cage like this, then I'll back up and I'll do a cage like this. And cage what cage these cages will do is they'll deny the information from the A players and they, they're they not gonna be sure whether you're walking across or whether you have all of your teammates walking across here. So what this might do is this might keep 2A. And um, it's good to switch it up sometimes, like maybe you can do the cages, just leave them there and then regroup with your team at B or mid. And if you want to do like a late round fake, you can pop the cages and you might be able to pull someone from mid or B to, uh, towards A, and that might make the defense at B or mid a lot weaker. With those cages, sometimes I'll do a camera like this just to see if anyone's peeking here or if anyone's pushing lower. If they start breaking that camera, what I'll probably do is maybe do like a more defensive camera like this just to see if they want to push. Um, and generally, I'll do a trip maybe here at sewer just so that like if I leave A and they wanna, they, they have a timing on me and they push to flank, they have to break the trip and I'll know if they're flanking. Or this trip is also pretty good. I think the, the best thing to think about in Cypher is just your main goal is basically to deny information. Uh, sometimes with the cages that I showed, you can make a play kind of like, if you feel that you have a read on how they're playing A, you can actually just maybe, Cage triggered. you can maybe just cross an A ramp by yourself and just take the map control here. It's sometimes good. It's a little risky, but you know, sometimes if you feel like you want to make a play or you have a read, it's not the worst thing to do. It could help your team out a lot. I think being unpredictable on offense is just as important uh, as being unpredictable on defense. Sometimes you can do your default A, which is what I recommend maybe most of the time, but sometimes you can come mid. Uh, you can come from suicide, maybe do this camera here. You can see, yeah. obviously all yeah. of mid sometimes, you can see over this box, which has become really common for offers to come. Maybe the jet will have an op and come for a pick here aggressively and look to dash away after she shoots. But if you do this camera here, she will basically get spotted before she can kill anyone, which is a really big help for your team. Or if anyone's playing aggressively in mill. You do a cage like this for ropes, maybe to help your team get out of market or just to take space in mid. You can also do maybe a cage like this for a male as well. Cage triggered. Also to take space and maybe create pressure in mid. You want your enemy to not know where you are because if they want to make a play and they don't expect you and you do, even if you just use your camera for example and they do the play, they will automatically like have to break the play because if you're able to spot two people and be main or if you're able to spot that they're making a play before they're able to get anything out of it, you can capitalize off that by taking space elsewhere. And I think Cypher, Cypher is generally a lurker, but if you're with your team, you can help them a lot by um, camming certain angles. Like let's say if you want to come B, 
you can do a camera like this. Maybe someone's off in here and if they get spotted by the camera, they have to kind of back away from the angle a bit. You give your teammates uh, advanced information to see if, if there's an opera. If there isn't one, they can basically come up here. If you want to do the strat with the sage wall, the sage can walk up here, wall. Or if your sage has already used the wall, you can obviously throw a cage like this maybe. And your teammates can cross without being seen from heaven, which is really good. Uh, if you're able to do this camera, it's also really good, but it's kind of dangerous because you're in an exposed position. But a camera like this would be really good. You can kind of see, you can kind of see this angle here. You can kind of see behind the pillar, right? And maybe even you get a tag off because if you're able to tag the opponent as you're taking the sight, your opponent will feel a lot of pressure because he keeps getting pinged from the camera. Uh, maybe around mid, you can be with the pack as well. You can do the cages, as I've said, to maybe grant your teammates some space. If you're able to go up a little further, a camera like this could be good. You can see this is a very common spot for the defenders to play around this area here. And maybe you can see them with the camera. Obviously, get a tag if you can. Um, or even just the camera and ropes as well to see if anyone's playing there. Maybe get up to... After you clear this box, you can get up to this point, do camera like this, clear out ropes for your team, nothing's there, so they don't have to worry about that angle, they can focus solely on mail here, on and taking B-Heaven. Um, I think the tripwires, are, they're pretty self-explanatory, you kind of just, as the round starts, you kind of just want to run to a side, I'll generally just run to A, I'll do the trip as I mentioned before, which is really good. Maybe this trip here, so that if they want to push through A, they have to break the trip and we'll know that they're, they, they want to flank or that they have an advanced position at A. Um, I think if you want to start around B or mid, you can come towards B main. There isn't really a good trip for B main before the barrier, so you, you probably have to wait for the barrier to open up and then you can do a trip like this. There's other trips like this that are kind of avoidable the enemy can go over it, right? They can jump over this. They can they can basically dodge a lot of trips uh, using this pile of trash here. So this is probably the best trip that you want to do for B. Maybe around mid, let's say you want to play no one mid, you can maybe just do a trip like off the barrier here. If you want to go B. And the sewer trip over here will be good enough as well for A side. So on attack, it's really good obviously to use your camera to kind of see if they push or maybe get some information like on a ramp here. Maybe you'll see the opera here, which is really good because if you see the opera here, maybe your teammates in mid don't have to worry about the opera anymore. But one really important thing about Cypher that I think is kind of uh, looked over is uh, once you get the information and you want to move away from A or let's see your teammates come in group A and uh, you see that there's no one here, you get the information for your team. It's really important that you take your camera back and maybe if your teammates need it, you can camera something like this or whatever. But if you're able to get the bomb down, the camera is very, very strong for post plants. So, so you get the bomb down and your teammates are kind of not in the best positions to hold the bomb. What you can do is you can do a camera, something like this, or maybe something like this. And basically you can clear out spots so that your teammates can leave the site, maybe get in better spots. And also if, as the enemies are retaking, you can actually see how they want to retake. Let's say you see four enemy screens, then yeah. uh, your teammates, you and your team can kind of come up with a play to counter that. Like maybe the, the guy hell can take contact or it just, the camera will give you like a really good idea of how to play the rounds, especially in post plants. Maybe, maybe it's a 1v1 and uh, the bomb is planted and you're kind of afraid to peek because you don't know if he's faking the defuse. You can tap the camera, you can tag him, you can see if he's on the bomb or off the bomb. And from then he will probably break your camera, but you've bought yourself a lot of time and a lot of pressure to win the round. So. Overall, to summarize, I think Cypher is a really good uh, defensive agent. Um, his role on defense is probably just to hold down a spot, probably B, and maybe just help your team get information on attack. He's very strong as a lurker, and maybe your main goal could be to deny information at A. But um, 
overall on both sides i think it's really important to keep in mind that you want to be unpredictable with where you're playing and how you're using your utility i feel like that was everything holy i actually didn't i didn't hold back on anything here <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Go check out the new Cloud9 app to keep up with all things Cloud9. You can find it in the App Store for quick and easy updates on your phone.